Hello. So, in this video, uh, we're going to be continuing our factoring. <laughs> so, in this case, we're doing the special forms for factoring. So, it's noteworthy that uh, the sort of two major uh, formulas that we're going to be sort of developing and discussing in this video, um, they are not something that you sort of have to memorize in the sense that the way that we're going to factor these things are things that you can factor with other techniques that we've learned. It's just that the things that we're going to be talking about are things that come up a lot and there are very quick ways to factor them. And so it's sort of common enough and easy enough to use these sort of quick tricks that they're worth knowing so that you spend a lot less time factoring them. Okay. So there's two major ones we're going to talk about. The first one is the difference of squares. And I'm putting this in quotes for a reason, which uh, I will demonstrate as we go. So a difference of squares, the sort of fundamental formula, which I will give you here, is if you have something, some ax squared minus some other b squared where really we could have like by or something in there. Um, so you have a thing squared minus another thing squared. This is the most common way of seeing it, but really all I care about is there's something squared and something squared. It could be all kinds of weird stuff, like a function, formula, whatever, squared minus squared, okay? And this then gets factored, if I'm looking at it this way, into ax minus b times ax plus b. So this again is one of those things where it's sort of easiest to see by demonstration. So if I were to look at something like, uh, so for example, if I were to look at 4x squared minus 9. So the first thing to do is sort of rewrite this as a difference of squares. So I'm going to write this as 2x quantity squared minus 3 quantity squared. Okay because if I square this, right, I'm going to square the 2 and square the x, it gets me 4x, square the 3, that gets me 9. And now it literally just works straight like this. So I take each of the inside pieces, I'm going to start with their difference, although the order you write it in doesn't matter as long as you get them both, and then the sum. Right? And so it just is a very quick, very nice, very easy way to just have the factors all at once. If you didn't remember it, you could actually do this by doing the AC method. And if you did the AC method, this is what you would end up getting to eventually, okay? Uh, another example, and to show you why I put squares in quotations there, what if I had something like um, 3x uh, to the fourth minus, um, in fact, actually, let me initially, I'll make it not quite as terrible as I was just about to make it. So let me make this actually. 4x to the fourth minus um, 9. And my goal here is to factor this completely. So same sort of initial setup, but now it's to the fourth instead of the squared. So my first term is going to be 2x squared squared minus 3 squared. So this is going to be 2x squared minus 3, 2x squared plus 3. So far, so good, not very hard, right? But my goal is to fully factor this with real coefficients, to be clear, because we haven't really talked about complex numbers much yet. So I have to then go and check these things. This, not factorable with real coefficients, that is. And in fact, I know it is because I can think of this as a difference of squares. And now is where that quotes comes in. Because 2 and 3 are not perfect squares, but they are perfect squares of something that isn't nice, right? They're not integer squares. It's not like 2 is some integer squared. So what I have to do is rewrite this as something squared minus something squared. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to rewrite 2x squared as square root of 2 
x squared minus square root of 3 squared. Uh, I guess I'm going to do this. There we go. And then I still have this 2x squared plus 3 along for the ride. But now I can do my difference of squares where these are the a, x, and b part, right? So I'm going to have square root of 2x minus square root of 3. Square root of 2x plus square root of 3. And 2x squared plus 3. So when we say difference of squares, we are sometimes being a little loose with the term square, right? Because we can do square roots to force something to be a perfect square when it comes to a real number. We're not going to be doing that, obviously, with the x's because we want these things to be polynomials, right? And if I had x to some weird power, it wouldn't be a polynomial anymore. So we're only doing it with the coefficients in this case, um, which like, technically this formula is still true if you did that with some weird power of x. Um, but we're not wanting to do that because we, we want to factor it to product of polynomials, okay? All right, so that's the difference of squares. Also going to do the other piece is the difference of cubes. Now, you probably are recalling from algebra or another pre-cal class, you might be thinking, well, what about difference and sum of cubes? To which I will point out, there isn't really a sum of cubes formula. Um, they, they sort of, it's often taught as there's a difference of cubes formula and a sum of cubes formula, and you have to try not to get them confused, and you may have learned a mnemonic called SOAP or something like that. But there's no reason for you to do any of that, um, because it turns out the difference of cubes formula works for both, and I'm going to show you how. So the first example I'm going to do, uh, so let me actually give the formula. Um, so if we have something that looks like ax cubed minus b cubed, this is going to be ax minus b times uh, ax squared plus um, ax times b plus b squared. And it's really important that you're very careful with how this is written if you're going to be doing the one formula, and I'll show you why. So my example, let's look initially just at a normal sort of nice difference of cubes. So let's think about uh, something like 8x cubed minus 27, okay? So again, my first sort of task, rewrite this as something cubed minus something cubed. So this is 2x cubed minus 3 cubed, and then apply my formula. So I'm going to get 2x minus 3. I'm going to get 2x quantity squared plus 2x times 3 plus 3 squared. And then I can clean that up. So I'm going to get 2x minus 3. So 2x squared is going to be 4x squared. 2x quantity squared is 4x squared. Uh, 2x times 3, right, so that's going to be 6x. And 3 squared is 9. And there we have it, OK? Now let's look at the example 8x cubed plus 27. Now this is a this appears to be a sum of square uh, sum of cubes, right? But my sort of argument I, I put forward as a as a conjecture or or a sort of claim that you don't need a sum of cubes formula that I can solve this with a difference of cubes. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to force this to be a difference of cubes. In particular, I'm going to write this as 8x cubed minus negative 27. And then I'm going to say that that is 2x quantity cubed minus minus 3 cubed. And we can check this, right? So if I cube 2x, I'm going to get 8x cubed. I've already done that bit. If I cube negative 3, I'm going to get negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, times negative 3 is negative 27. 
But if it's negative 27 minus, right, minus negative 27 is plus 27. So in fact, this is a difference of cubes, even though it was originally written to look like a sum of cubes. Now, it might seem like extra work to write it like this, but this lets me use the exact same formula I had a minute ago, and it will work as long as I'm careful when I plug stuff in. So I'm going to do exactly that. So I'm going to have a 2x minus b minus 3, because remember, now b is negative 3, times a quantity squared, so 2x squared, plus ax times b, so 2x times negative 3, plus b, negative 3, squared. Now clean it up. So I'm going to have 2x minus minus. So this is going to be 2x. That was a, it's like a Disney 2. I don't know what happened there. Try that again. So 2x minus minus, so that's plus 3. 2x quantity squared is 4x. Now I'm going to have plus, but I have 2x times negative 3. So I have plus a negative 6x. So I really have minus 6x plus, and then a negative, but squared. So it's going to be plus 9. Okay. And this is, again, the correct one. If you sort of remember your sum of cubes formula, supposedly, right, the soap, so the same, right, because it's the same sign at the beginning, but really that's because the negative canceled. And then the opposite, but it's not, a, it's not really opposite, it's that I had plus, and then that, that negative comes out and makes it into a negative, which is why it ends up being the opposite. And this thing's always positive, but it's always positive because I'm adding a square, and the square of anything is a positive number, right? So if you're a person that sort of really wants to hold on to that sum of cubes formula, Go ahead, you can, I'm, that's fine with me. Um, I'm just pointing out like, one of the reasons I'm a math person is because I am terrible with, rem with memorizing things. Believe it or not, my memory is awful. So the less stuff I can remember, or I should say the less stuff I have to remember, the better off I am. Um, so I remember the difference of cubes and then I can rewrite a sum of cubes looking thing as a difference of cubes and use that same sort of breakdown formula, okay? So with that, those are our special forms. We have the difference of squares. Very important, I'm gonna point out, there really is no sum of squares formula with real numbers. It's not even like there isn't in some pretend sense like we did over here where like you could have a sum of cubes formula if you wanna memorize the extra stuff, um, but you don't have to because it works using the difference. Really, there's no way to factor with real numbers a sum of squares. It just isn't a thing. So you can do a difference of squares, which we've done, you can do a difference of cubes, and you can do what appears to be a sum of cubes by making it into a difference of cubes. Or if you are somebody that really wants to hold on to both formulas, you can use both formulas. It's not that it's wrong, it's just a little more to remember, that's all. Okay, now with that, that is special forms.